Okay, we are now in episode three of Star Wars Ahsoka, and I am feeling the show a lot more this episode. Like I said, the last two episodes, it felt very slow moving, and it felt very much like you're supposed to just remember these characters from Rebels and know that they're important because you've seen Rebels, but if you haven't seen Rebels, that's a problem. And there's a little bit, well, not a little bit, there's a lot of more Rebels fan service in this one. We've got the space whales that we saw at the end of Rebels. We've got uh, Jason Sindula, Hera's kid with Kane and Jarrus, the Jedi from Rebels. Uh, he shows up. And I, it's kind of weird. I don't really know why human Twi'lek hybrids just look like humans with colored hair. Like, like Twi'leks have like the, the whole, you know, the head tail things, right? And uh, the, the hybrids don't have those at all. They just like look like humans with colored hair. And I'm like, Twi'leks don't even have hair. So why is it the hair that gets colored and not their skin? Th that That's, I mean, obviously that, that's been something before this show. We had seen uh, one of those hybrids, uh, I, I want to say in Clone Wars. Uh, it feels like it was in Clone Wars because uh, there was uh, a clone who had defected and gone and married a Twi'lek. So we saw their kids and that that's what they looked like. So it's already been established that that's what the hybridization is. Anyway, Jason Sindula is really only shown in this episode to be like, hey, look, we've got the baby that that uh, the two characters from Rebels had. And uh, maybe they plan to do more with the kid. I imagine they probably just threw it in as fan service. And I don't really... If the show is going to try and sell itself entirely on fan service, it's not going to to reach the general audiences. My mom, uh, I was I've been watching the show with my mom, and she said she liked this one more than the other two, but the other two just weren't weren't selling her at all. Ahsoka feels far more like the Ahsoka from uh, the cartoon in this one. You know, uh, Ahsoka was always doing the fun, crazy action stuff. There's a whole sequence in this one where. She like gets out on the deck of her ship and uses her lightsabers to deflect incoming ship fire. And I thought that was cool and that felt very much like something Ahsoka from Clone Wars would have done. But even so, it feels like Rosario Dawson is not used to that kind of action. Ahsoka herself feels a lot more sluggish than she does in the cartoon, and some of that, of course, is going to be chalked up to the fact that in animation, movements are going to be more exaggerated than they can be in live action. But even so, I have seen fast-paced action in live action. It can be done, and I don't think Rosario Dawson is up to the task of doing that. A lot of her action seems a lot more slow and deliberate than... Uh, uh, Ahsoka is a quick moving character and it, it just, uh, you know, even if Rosario Dawson herself can't do it, you, you get a stunt double who can move. I, I think probably part of it, too, is the uh, the costume for Ahsoka looks like it's pretty heavy. And I think they worry if they do too much fast motion that the uh, the head tails are going to uh, flip around too much. That was one reason why her head tails are actually shorter in live action than they were portrayed in Rebels. Because uh, uh, for uh, her species, their head tails get longer as they get older, but they shortened it just as a practical concern for doing lightsaber fights. Some people, that bugs them. I get why they shortened it, but it does pose a practical concern for doing the kind of action that we expect to see Ahsoka do in a show like this. Also, I only just now figured out, uh, you know that thing in Star Wars when there's like la laser blasts being fired at a ship and they explode nearby the ship? I always figured that was like kind of like a uh, a timed charge kind of a thing. Like it's fire it, it's this far away. So once it gets to that distance, it'll explode. But actually in this episode, I think I think they explode because of the ship deflectors, because uh, we're seeing a space battle. And as soon as the and they, they even do like the Star Trek thing, like, oh, deflectors down to 10 percent. And as soon as the deflectors are done, those laser blasts stop exploding near the ship and they start actually hitting the ship. So I guess that's what the deflectors do in Star Wars. As for some stuff that I really like in this show, it is uh, kind of a, a broader um, story arc that we saw uh, being built in Mandalorian Season 3. We're starting to see the uh, the first hints of the, the coalescing uh, Imperial remnants into the First Order. And it has a very, like, Vimar feel to it where like the new republic just seems to be like well you know of course we've got former imperial remnants working in all levels of government and industry because you know most of them were just people just doing their jobs and so because of that the new republic is kind of like turning a blind eye to the pro-imperial sentiment that's growing 
and like you know the whole thing where the villains are trying to get Thrawn back because Thrawn will be seen as like kind of a um, a rallying figure for the rest of the Imperial remnants, the the Imperial warlords out there. And uh, there's there's like a moment where Harrison Dula is uh, talking to a bunch of senators, including Mon Mothma. But like one of the senators is like, "Oh, I don't think we need to do anything about this. Thrawn is just a fairy tale at this point." And uh, and Hera is like, well, "Did you did you fight in the war?" And he's like, "No." And she's like, "So you just sat on the sideline waiting to see who came out on top?" And it, uh, it feels like the show uh, and. and Kind of the the whole Disney Plus Star Wars um, series, the Dave Filoni stuff, feels like they're trying to build up that whole like uh, political arc of just the ways that the liberal establishment allows fascism to fester and grow because they don't take it seriously. And uh, I, I would like to see them continue in that vein because obviously we know the First Order shows up and wipes out the New Republic in, in the uh, sequel movies. And so it'd be not, it's nice to see that just like how Dave Filoni took the Clone Wars series and expanded on the politics that uh, George Lucas intended for the prequels, but didn't have the deftest hand in exploring. Dave Filoni did a great job in the Clone Wars of doing that. And we're seeing a lot more of that being layered through the different Disney Plus series uh, that are all set around the same time, like, you know, five years after Return of the Jedi, that whole the, the Mandalorian, Book of Boba Fett, Ahsoka, all of those series intertwining. This building thread, I I, 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 I want to see more of it. I like seeing where it's going here. But I think there's still an reliance on Rebels member berries, I guess I would say. And I would say that if they do one that I would like to see would be bringing back Kanan Jarrus as a Force Ghost, because he was voiced by Freddie Prince Jr. So just having Freddie Prince Jr. as like a Force Ghost to like talk to Hera and maybe his son. Uh, but I don't think that's gonna happen because I think Freddie Prince Jr. said he he was done with Star Wars. So yeah, we probably won't get that. I know we're getting Force Ghost Anakin in this show because there was a trailer where we got to see him. And I, I definitely want to see that because it's the first time we would get to see Hayden Christensen version of Anakin uh, acknowledging Ahsoka. Because obviously, Ahsoka was created after the prequel trilogy was done, and she was never originally intended to be a character that existed. She was just created to have, you know, a kid character for, for the kids watching Clone Wars to latch onto. But she's grown to be such a popular character in the fandom. It's great to see as she makes the transition to live action, the uh, attempts to make sure she's better integrated into everything. So having having uh, Force Ghost Anakin showing up at some future point in the series, it's a nice handing over. I'm I'm looking forward to that. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm trying to get my channel monetized, so your view means a lot. Don't forget to toss me a like and subscribe and ring the bell. I stream every Monday and Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific, so catch me live and join in on the convo. You can find all my socials in the description below, and thank you to all my patrons with a special shout out to Piftle Cakes and Ryan D. Your support means the world. Catch you next time.